It's recording. Okie doke. Uh, as I mentioned, the topic is on fasting. Have you all read that chapter, perhaps? Mm -hmm. You'll find, I would trust, it is very good. It's very good. It gives a history of the topic of fasting. It gives reasons for it. And I'm just going to focus on some of the, if you will, spiritual aspects of it. I'm not going to go into the history and, or anything like that. Uh, some of the background, some of the reading. But I picked out some pointers that uh, we might reflect on. Uh, this is an ancient practice. It goes way back, goes back into the Old Testament. But one of the top, one of the points here that in the mentions is all spiritual disciplines that make up the incredible landscape of Catholic spirituality are designed in one way or another to restore our lost self-possession. That's it. So that we can once again love God and neighbor and be loved the way we were created to be loved. I think that is an important aspect of what we do or become in, spirit, in our spirituality is to lead us to become our fullest self as God uh, wants us to be. Our fullest self in so far that we see our faith selves in the light of God. Who God is to us and who God thinks, not thinks, but says we are, which we often don't believe which we often don't see and recognize. That it's kind of a, a paradox in the sense that when we look at ourselves as human beings in the face of God, before God, we see ourselves as very little. We are a small creature. By example, uh, I would say for, I always think of it when, if you see, you probably have seen, you know, walking down the pavement, you've seen a cluster of ants, little ants running around, and as a kid I used to step on them. <laughs> now I've learned. But that they, they're so small, and I think, look at myself, how big I am, and how small they are, and how easy I can destroy them. And I say, you know, this is God to us in the sense that God is so vast and supreme and made the universe and he, oh, he is beyond the universe. And then, he, then you and I are on this little planet in this whole universe and our planet is so small in regard to the Milky Way that, you know, it just hits us when we think about that from our side, who we are. Then we look at it from God's side, and God says, all that I am loves you. Father, Son, and Spirit. As God, I love you, and I want you to be the best you can be. That's why I sent my son to live with you to enhance your humanity, to show you who you are and have that you have dignity, that you have honor, that you are my son and my daughter to give us a sense of our value. That we see ourselves in that light, how valuable we are, that God, ultimate God, lives in us. That this, this immense God chooses to live in us human beings. Then we look at ourselves as human beings and we know our frailty. We know sometimes how we are tossed and turned 
in our life and how things uh, get a hold of us and how sometimes we get into habits of things and sometimes how uh, even we get into habits that take us away from God, if you will. Or that we find ourselves uh, just getting wrapped up into things of this world. Consumer, being, we're being, we want this, we want that, I gotta have this, I gotta have that. Or also that we indulge ourselves. Oh, I love chocolate and I'm gonna have chocolate. I love this, I have to have a dessert. I have to do this, and some people, sadly, you know, uh, eating, eating becomes for them a kind of a relaxation, as it were, or a, a kind of a comfort food, we say, this comfort food. Huh? And so we eat to be comfortable because we can't face what's facing us. Fasting is a part of our discipline, I should say, is part of our necessary of our life. To discipline ourselves to say, just the Ten Commandments are certain discipline to tell us what is right and what is wrong, to discipline us. But we know in ourselves, in our inner life, that we are tossed, we are pulled. We are pulled sometimes by anger, we are pulled by envy. We are pulled by desire. We are pulled by passion. Uh, all of these things that, that, and you know, when we even when we try to pray, that we find that our imagination, is, God, I'm all over the place. I can Why can't I stop this thinking? But I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. I want to be with God, but I hear my mind is going all over the place. Well. Fasting is a way of disciplining ourselves bodily and, if you will, spiritually. That, you know, a lot of people go, <laughs> you know, you think of Lent. People say, well, I'm going to give up my, I'm going to give up my beer during Lent for the guys. I'm going to give up beer, I'm going to give up smoking. Well, that's a real discipline, if they can hang on to it. You know, uh, not smoking during Lent. They, when, if you had that addiction and you try to get off it, you know what it's like, the pull, to want to do it again. The pull to have another, to have a cigarette. Or persons who have drinking problems. I, I have to have a drink. There, there are those who are alcoholics who, you know, they go the whole week, but come the weekend, it's a binge. They can't control it. It's hard to control. Our human nature the, is such that that's the way we're made. All these emotions that we have are fundamentally good. So we don't say any of the emotions that God gave us is humanity are bad. Of themselves they're good. But they're, like someone has expressed, they're like wild horses. You gotta tame them. You gotta pull them in sometimes. Fasting helps to control that part of us. If to fast, I think, for example, giving up some food, fasting, the church has said fasting is good, we do it for Lent. We used to do it in Lent. At one time, in the early days, every day of Lent was a fast day. That meant two small meals and one big meal. And the only ones that were exempt were those who were heavy workers, like miners. But the idea was to have like five ounces for breakfast, maybe a couple ounces for lunch, and then you could have a larger meal for the supper to fast. If, again, just along, think of it, too, along that line, if you haven't eaten for a while, suppose you have breakfast, and you don't have a chance for lunch. What is your experience? Boy, I can't wait for supper. 
Boy, I'm really hungry. Boy, oh boy. That's nature pulling us in that direction. But when we do, when we fast and say, I'm not going to eat when I feel like it. I am putting a hold, not that that, uh, putting a hold on that desire. See, and I'm not hurting myself, now if I can, but it is a good experience to put a hold on that side of us, on our bodily side, for the sake of being able to become who we are. The full person in control of self, self-possession. That's the idea, that we want to be self-possessed. We don't want to be controlled, but we want to be in control of ourselves and not be controlled by something in us. And that's one of the reasons for fasting. Uh, in many different ways, we can fast, you know, you can, often it's mostly people fast from food. That has been the, was the practice. People, uh, saints in the past, were fasting from food. Uh, they would eat maybe one little meal a day and just fast. Well, people today, you know, uh, say, well, I'm good, it, Lent is a good time to go on a diet. <laughs> uh, and, but the idea of fasting is connected body and soul. You are a delicate composition of body and soul. This is the essential makeup of the human person. Your body and soul are carefully linked by your will and intellect. It's in present form the body is temporal. One day it will die, be buried and decay. Your soul, however, is eternal. The body and soul are constantly vying for dominance. So, so which could, should steer the, sh the ship. Does it make sense for something that is temporal to lead something that is eternal? No. That which is eternal should lead and guide that which is temporal. But as much as that makes sense in the context of an intellectual discussion, you and I both know how easy it is to allow ourselves to be seduced by the things of this world. That we are, I'm kind of top torn in a certain sense. Uh, to be honest, when I think of this world as God's beautiful creation, and all that God has given us is good, all our emotions are good. To enjoy a meal and thank God for the meal, is good. To enjoy a dessert is good. To enjoy uh, what God has given in, it, in nature, to appreciate that, to enjoy what is, we see in another person is good. Anger has its place. Envy can be emulation. I am, I want to be like that person. That person has good qualities, you see. What I'm saying is that in the past, I think our spirituality was this world was, is bad. Everything in the world is bad. Our emotions are bad. And we are called, we're called to be kind of angelic. No, we're called to be fully human. To enjoy what God has given us is human beings because Christ enjoyed them himself. But at the same time, that as human beings, we can let ourselves be possessed by another, by our, in a certain sense, by that which is in us, but that we control. If you don't control your anger, people have difficulty controlling their anger. Well, they're not, that's not making them to be who they were intended to be. They have to come into some 
there has to be some discipline. People get caught in a habit of sin. What is a discipline? Fasting, real fasting, helps us to become aware, I think spiritually, as we experience the desire for in ourselves, experience that desire to bring us to God. In other words, to be aware of God in our lives and what part he plays in our lives. And that this is the more important part of our lives is our relationship with God, not our self-satisfaction but our relationship with God is that which is what is, what is, what is good. Uh, fasting is a primary example of these spiritual exercises. It opens our heart and mind. We set aside our prejudices and rediscover the genius of fasting and how it is, can be a change of our life. There is that. In each of these cases that is fasting, like in Samuel, remember that? Fasted, the Israelites fasted as Samuel's urging. Fasting was used to some, humbly seek out God's will. Also fasting, I think, goes along with silence. Uh, we talk, being able to be silent. Uh, when you start praying and in the presence of God, I think one of the temptations is, because I'm sitting here and nothing is happening, this seems to be a waste of time. I am sitting here in quiet. When I am used, I'd love to have some music, or I'd love to have the radio on, or I'd love to have the television on, and, I'm, and that's what I'm used to. But for me to sit in total silence, just to be me in myself and with Christ is a discipline. It's learning to be disciplined, to take that time to be quiet and learning that quiet leads us to God, not takes us away when we are open because it's in the silence that God really speaks to us. He doesn't speak to us out loud but rather in our silence. And when we feel that nothing's happening, God is working. Saints have experienced in their quiet and in their prayer a darkness, nothing. God, I have no picture of God, it's nothing. I, but why? Because I can't, as a human being, get a hold of God. I can't put, put him into a concept. I can't put him into a picture. I can't enclose him. He's too big. So to live in that darkness, and by that I mean when we're praying, that we try to control, again, discipline, our imagination. Because our imagination, and I'm sure you all experience, I'm sitting there quietly, and all of a sudden, where did that come from? This thought came into my mind, and this picture came into my mind. Where did that come from? I'm not, I wouldn't believe. And all these, to control that is very difficult, but it's a part of the discipline, and that can be a part of fasting, spiritual fasting. And that silence, though, is an important part of our spirituality. Silence, to learn to be silent, to let God be. And so it's so great to hear when you say, you know, I've gone to the uh, Blessed Sacrament. I've sat uh, for an hour with God. I've sat an hour with Christ, and I'm just trying to be with Him. Just trying to be quiet. That's wonderful. That's where real prayer is. To be quiet and say, okay, God, you know, I'm here with you, and I just want to be with you. And all these thoughts that are going through my mind, I give to you. And I just teach me, help me to be quiet. Help me to be quiet in here. Or if you can't go to the Blessed Sacrament, even to take time at home. From all the hustle and bustle, just to step back. 
and you get it, and it also gives a perspective. It brings us back into the reality that this world has its place, it is good. But I have to look at the world as God sees it. I have to look at, and that's where the faith comes in, of growing in the awareness, the consciousness of what I believe and who I believe in. That God, in that quiet, gives me insight into himself gives me insight into his love for me so that I experience a deepening of relationship with God, with Christ in the quiet that I can take. Then, living that, I take that out to my relationships with others. But fasting, both physically and spiritually, are I would have to say, an essential part of growing to become who I am, who I'm intended to be. <laughs> and I'm looking at that, I'm speaking for myself because I'm saying, Paul, I think you need a little more fasting. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need, I think I, you need a little more fasting in your life. Yeah, I have great opportunities to be with the Lord and the Blessed Sacrament and all, and I'm trying in prayer, but I think also a little more, Physical, uh, physical fasting, because there is that aspect that the, the, the need that I feel, the need to eat particularly, uh, kind of pulls me back into the reality of God, and that God is, God is, part, is an essential part of my life. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I go back, to, I, I'll end with this then, I think I've stopped enough. Uh, when I was in the seminary, minor seminary, I went in after eighth grade, and my desire was I was going to be a saint in four short years. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, I started, you know, because reading all these spiritual books and the lives of the saints and all of this and how they, what the penances that they did, which I have difficulty with. I think I had difficulty with St. Francis because he beat himself up and he said, my, my body is my ass. Well, I don't think that was, that's right. My body is the is is temple of the Holy Spirit. It's something valuable. Uh, and we are connected, it's body and soul, not just soul. To demean the body is I think wrong. Christ never demeaned his body. He rose, he rose from the dead. It's moderation. You have to see all that, it, all that is good. But I was saying, but I, I have to go back, I, was, I started fasting. I started giving up this and giving up that. And I can remember one afternoon I was out playing and I wanted, glass, wanted water. And I felt so desirous to have a drink. I'm saying, I'm kind of, you know, God, are you expecting me to give up everything? Give it all up? I can't do it. And I'm just, I broke it then, and I went and had water, and I felt so guilty because I wasn't, couldn't be faithful to that kind of fast. But I think that's, again, fasting has its value, has its purpose to lead us to God, but not to demean us, not to just, to hurt, hurt ourselves. Uh, you know, and so, I think it's something to be aware of. Uh, you don't want to fast and hurt your body, or hurt yourself. Uh, but I think some of the saints went overboard in their penances. Uh, now, it may have brought them to God, but I think they missed half of the, uh, missed half the life. That's just my opinion. I don't know if it's theologically correct or not, but that's my, that's my opinion, that our bodies are good. Our bodies and, and what God has given us in our bodies are good. Uh, and so it's learning to become fully human, body and soul, not just soul. Fasting can help enough. Take glorious. Take glorious.